Hello, welcome to Bedroom Builds at the R Setup Series Episode 3, How to Run FFmpeg, coming from the previous episode where we implemented the command line parsing and error handling. Running FFmpeg in our Rust YouTube uploader is necessary because we want to automate thumbnail creation. And to create a thumbnail, we have to provide a background, which optimally is a snapshot out of your video. To achieve that, in Rust, we can use the standard process command struct, which will help us with uh, the execution of another external binary. In our case, it will be ffmpeg. Let's hop into the code and uh, look at what we have done. What you can see here is now the fully implemented main RS that holds all the pretend output that we've built last time. And what has been added are these two comment lines and this whole if block. What we are doing here is fairly straightforward. In uh, the code, as the comment says, we are checking for our options that were passed to our upload command to see if our thumbnail has a value or not. If you have not provided a thumbnail, then it will be auto-generated for you. How do we do that? Well, we take the options file, which is the video file that you have to provide in order to do an upload. Then we use this uh, path buff feature to set a new extension. So we replace the extension of your video, which could be like MP4 or MOV or something like that with uh, the JPEG extension. Once we have that, we can actually verify again if this file already exists, because that may be the case. If it does not exist, we will run from our FFmpeg module that we will show soon, the our VG from video command that takes the location of the binary that we want to run. So FFmpeg in our case, the file name of the video that we want to get the snapshot out of and which second we want to have that snapshot taken. What is missing here is how we create a thumbnail. This making of a thumbnail will come in the next episode. Once uh, we have created our thumbnail, now we have to replace the thumbnail option, which is a non in this case, with a value. So here we provide a sum thumb path. And in order to pull uh, this line off, we have to make our options mutable up here. Okay, let's open our new FFmpeg module code. Inside our FFmpeg module, we only have this one function, the VG from video, so background from video, some documentation. We are going to use the standard process command as shown in the presentation already. So what are the arguments? The arguments are our path to the FFmpeg binary, the video's file name, and at which second we want to do the snapshot. The first two arguments, VideoFN and FFmpeg, have a weird uh, trait bounds as a type and not a direct type. The reason is this makes it easier for a user of this module to use our BG from a video function. Because in the case of SREF OS string, or sref path, we can now pass in a string slice, a path object, a path buffer, and uh, many others. If we were to, for example, make this a string or a string slice, we would have to convert the argument when calling the function. This way, it's a much nicer API to use from the user's uh, perspective. And that's why I chose to go with this. And the reason why we use OS uh, string for the binary of FM FFmpeg, the command new expects something that can be referenced as an OS uh, string. And path is necessary to create a path buffer, which we will do here to come up with our screenshots file name. The seconds are, of course, a U size because we cannot have negative seconds to find a location within a video. The next uh, three lines are fairly easy to understand. So one, two, three. First one, we 
shadow the video file name variable and make it a path buffer because we want to now clone the path buffer and use the path buffers call method set extension to replace the file extension of the video with the PNG. We will use the PNG format for our snapshot to have the best quality possible for further processing to make the thumbnail. We again check if this screenshot file name exists or not. If it doesn't exist, we actually run FFmpeg. If it does exist, we will tell the user, well, we have found a screenshot, we are skipping because of that. To run the command is fairly straightforward. We have command new, then we pass in the binary that we want to run. In our case, it is the path to FFmpeg. And our arguments are an array of the arguments that we want to use. Then this command, when we run output, will make sure that all of these arguments are correctly escaped for the shell. And we don't have to care about escaping correctly ourselves. So what's up with those two string uh, lossy methods that we use within our arguments? Well, the file names can contain illegal characters for UTF-8 because they are operating system dependent. And in order to avoid running into a problem with this potential encoding issue, the two string lossy will replace the characters that are not valid Unicode by a default replacement character. And this way we make sure that this does not error out and provides us at least some file name that we can later use. The at second is a U size, but it implements the S string trait. So we can make it a string for us, which is needed for the arguments. Once we've run that, we can ask for the output. And if the command fails, we can use expect. So that's similar to unwrap, but here we can provide a message as to what we have expected. And here we let the user know that we failed to run FFmpeg, even though he wanted to. Here we run into an issue that I will fix later, or maybe some contributor will. Sometimes FFmpeg actually runs and successfully exits with a zero status code, but it did not actually write the screenshot. So I've prepared here to print out right now the two standard out and standard error, their respective output of FFmpeg to the user. That's kind of annoying because it fills your screen with actual useless information. You just want to know if your screenshot worked out or not. But for this, we first have to come up with a classic error case that is reproducible. And once we have that, we can check for specific output maybe or some other way like checking the file date of the screenshot file name to verify that the FFmpeg made a successful run. Right, once we have uh, done all of this, we return the screenshot's uh, file name. This can then be used as, as you have seen before in the main for generating the thumbnail later on. In this episode, we learned how we can run external binaries using Rust and how we optimally treat the uh, file path. Thanks uh, for watching. Coming up next in the RCTOP series will be creating the thumbnail where we will merge this with a logo and write out text using TrueType fonts.